elevated homocysteine increases your risk for heart attack and stroke, and you want to be below 10. When you're above 15, you double your risk for Alzheimer's disease. So doctors are not looking at that. It seems that when cholesterol was being evaluated as a heart risk factor, at the same time, homocysteine was known to be a risk factor for plaque. But since homocysteine was only changeable by using B12, B6, and folic acid, the drug companies didn't want to pick up on that and carry the banner for it. But since there was no available for tre treatment for cholesterol, the drug companies forced cholesterol as being the only and major contributor to heart disease. What's the, what's the answer for elevated homocysteine? Simple. B6, B12, folic acid. But you can also take riboflavin, you can take uh, garlic, and also omega-3 will help with uh, the homocysteine. So we got now uh, the family history. We got cholesterol, high blood pressure, another killer, another killer. Uh, blood pressure now, the guidelines people don't realize, if you're above 135 over 85, that's high blood pressure. High blood pressure is more common in women after midlife. About half the women over the age of 45 in our country have high blood pressure and blood pressure rises as we get older. There are a variety of natural things that help to thin the blood. Typically, traditional medicine talks about giving a person aspirin. And aspirin does not give you much benefit other than decreasing the platelet count. That's one part of a complicated process. And individuals who may be taking aspirin may have stomach upset, can have gastritis, or even ulcers as a result of taking aspirin or some of the anti-inflammatories. In the complementary world, we talk about using fish oil, because that helps to decrease triglycerides, decrease cholesterol. The EPA and DHA in fish oil are great for the developing brain, as well as the mature brain. Fish oil decreases inflammation, which is important. Natokinase decreases inflammation, decreases fibrinogen. Vitamin E helps to thin the blood. So when we talk about the nutritional approach, we're using a variety of different things to cover every different aspect of the blood and the thinning or the thickening of the blood. Garlic is beneficial to help thin the blood, and garlic has wonderful antioxidant and immune stimulating properties. Vitamin C as well, great antioxidant, immune stimulating properties, helps to thin the blood somewhat. So there are many natural things, but we could look at each of the parameters that are abnormal and use nutrients to help to correct those. It's not just one treatment like giving a person aspirin. It's using a combination of things with appropriate evaluation and testing and proving the result. Okay, so we got uh, blood pressure. Then the next is diabetes or high blood sugar. Uh, diabetes uh, has now been classified not only as an endocrine disorder, but as a cardiovascular disorder because there's such a high incidence of heart attack and stroke. Well, why is that? First of all, there's inflammation, there's elevated homocysteine, there's frequently elevated blood pressure, and, uh, the, and, and with diabetes now, we know there's a very low hormone um, levels, especially testosterone in men. Diabetes increases a woman's risk for heart disease fivefold. And that is a very powerful risk factor, especially in women who are under 50. Most people do know if you're diabetic, you have high blood sugar. But what they don't know is that individuals with a heart problem, be it an angioplasty, a heart attack, a bypass, or congestive heart failure, I say at least one in two have insulin resistance, high blood sugar. This was brought out recently in an article in The Lancet uh, last year showing that men having a heart attack had three to four times the incidence of diabetes and prediabetes. Now, did the heart attack give them the diabetes? No, of course not. When they came into the hospital, they were noticed to have high blood sugars, and then they were diagnosed at that time. Diabetes has become epidemic here in the United States, and I think there are a number of reasons for this. And the, the, the reasons relate not only to diabetes, because diabetes uh, the processes that lead to diabetes can also lead to other pro-inflammatory conditions and they're all interrelated. The, the American Diabetes Association just came out with an edict saying that uh, probably 75% of people in the United States are at risk for diabetes. 
There are 57 million pre-diabetics in this country. They have about 10 years prior to when they developed diabetes that they had an abnormal glucose that most doctors are missing. They should be getting what we call a hemoglobin A1C. A hemoglobin A1C is the three-month control of your blood glucose should be well below six. As you get to six and above, you go into diabetes. I now do that on all my heart, heart patients and certainly on my patients that are overweight. And I might say this, if anyone is out there with a weight problem, with triglycerides, with a family history of diabetes, they need a three-hour glucose tolerance test with insulin levels. We can pick up hyperinsulinemia, we can pick up diabetes, and we can pick up uh, millions of people with diabetes. It's not, a week doesn't go by that I don't, rec I don't diagnose two or three cases of diabetes that are new. And this is largely related to our lifestyle factors, uh, insufficient exercise, too much stress, lack of sleep, and very poor diets especially diets that are high in sugar and other refined carbohydrates, white flour, white starches. Dr. Ralph DeFranzo at the recent American Diabetes Association um, a meeting in San Francisco, this is 2008, gave the new paradigm in the management of diabetes. And he suggested triple therapy. Triple therapy in the sense, and by the way, I'm holistic, but for diabetes, I use a lot of drugs as well as nutraceuticals. You have to. Of course, there's a spectrum of severity. I mean, someone that's mildly pre-diabetic, not that overweight, you don't have to hit them with three drugs. But we do recommend now triple, triple drug therapy, which is a TZD, and the only one available right now is something called a pioglitazone or a drug called Actos. And the second is metformin or glucophage, which is great because that helps with the insulin resistance in the liver. It also helps you lose weight. And then the third is a new miracle drug, which happens to be an injectable, uh, which is what we call an incretin analog. It's called Bietta. And I have several hundred people in my practice on Bietta because it does a number of things. Primarily, it helps control the blood sugar. It increases your insulin when you need it. It stops the stomach from emptying so rapidly. And also, it makes the brain feel hungry. So high blood sugar, diabetes, another critical risk factor for heart disease. Another killer, of course, is smoking. You might laugh, but there's still a lot of people smoking. And that is just markedly increase your risk for heart attack and stroke. If you're a smoker, you triple your risk for having a heart attack as a woman. You not only triple your risk for having a heart attack, you also have menopause about three years earlier than a woman who's a non-smoker. Uh, other things are stress and poor lifestyle hostile, hostility, anger, and so forth. High stress is an independent risk factor for heart attack and stroke. We know that people who are, uh, who are chronically stressed have higher blood pressure and higher heart rates, indicating the flush of stress hormones that do that, epinephrine and norepinephrine that we make, that, we, that are important hormones when we have to run away from a stressful situation. There's good stress and bad stress, and the chronic stress is the one that leads to heart disease. More stress, more hostility, more anger, more road rage, more heart attacks, more strokes, more inflammation in the body. So you have to reduce stress. There have been some earlier studies that showed something very interesting, particularly in people with depression. Their blood clotting cells, or platelets, tend to clump together. In the, in the depressed patients who are untreated, people who are depressed, their blood platelets are, are, tend to clot, and blood clots are what causes heart attacks. These are not independent risk factors, but I'm going to mention two other things that you should be looking at and telling your doctor you want tested because chances are he won't test them. And that's a high sensitivity C-reactive protein that measures the inflammation in the, uh, in the blood vessels, and inflammation is associated with cardiovascular disease because arteriosclerosis is a complicated process, not only involving cholesterol, but the oxidized cholesterol uh, causing an accelerated inflammatory process in the blood vessel. So C-reactive protein is critical. The cardiac or high sensitivity CRP, the C-reactive protein test, can be easily done at almost all commercial labs. C-reactive protein is an, inf is an inflammatory marker. We now know that there's a link between inflammation 
and heart, heart attack risk. 